Silly question, what color is Elton John's hair? I should know this. I feel like it's gone lighter as he's gotten older. Yeah, I mean, well... <laughs> I think bl it's... Blonde? No, I think it's kind of like... Is it orangey? Are we saying strawberry blonde? I'm gonna go strawberry blonde he's for Elton John. becoming orange-haired for the yeah. sake of today. I don't know how to do a strawberry blonde with crayons. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually went to um, London School of Art. Really? For five years. Did you specialize in crayons or um, how did you get there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like fine. illustration. Nice. Yeah, and like portraits and stuff. Cool. Yeah, if you want, I could draw you. Could you? Yeah, right oh, now. Really? Do, you want me, do you want me to? Let's do it. Okay. So this is gonna break the rules of what this segment is? I mean, it's becoming something else now, but I'll just do a little quick sketch. So we're taking over. I'll stand up in my posture, right? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> I did not expect this to be happening. <laughs> Has anyone ever drawn you before? Uh, I feel like I've seen the kind of like a, like a, a carnival, maybe. Yeah, like, like a like, caricature. Yeah, I feel like those are a little generic, though. I'm excited to see what you're gonna do here. Yeah, no, I sell I sell my drawings on uh, Etsy. Really? Yeah, yeah. I can't tell if you're being serious or. <laughs> Should I get the chains in there as well? Sure. Were the chains something you bought, like? Kind of a long time. time ago, recently? Or? Uh, some of them. I have like my palm tree one, so like my manager Miles, same spelling as great you. Name. Uh, great name. Great, great name. Uh, yeah. Him and Kygo kind of started like their palm tree crew a while back, yeah. which would just started out as I'm giving palm trees to people because of Tropical House. And now it's kind of morphed into our management team. There's like palm tree crew, I'm signed to palm tree records, there's like palm tree festivals. And they've probably given out like two or three hundred of these palm trees to, uh, <laughs> sorry. to a bunch of celebrities. I'm, sorry, I'm listening. I'm just, um, yep, yeah, keep yeah, going. So this one I didn't buy for myself. I got this one a while back. Um, this one I got in Vegas a bit ago. You know, I'm kind of slowly collecting over time. Nice. Yeah. Um, what kind of headphones do you wear on stage? Have you got like blinged out headphones or anything that you... No. Or so any, I, any kind of equipment that's like personalized? I had Kygo headphones for a while because he had his own headphone brand, but they've... Uh, they stopped making the, D the DJ ones, so, and I just broke my last pair, so I literally, this is gonna sound boring, but I went on Amazon and bet, like, overnight primed a uh, pair of just generic Sennheiser ones. Oh, really? Because I needed them for a show the next day, so. Uh, yeah, that's it. this is great. It's the struggles that, yeah. that DJs go through that we don't know about. So this for the awesome. time being, that's what I got. I think we're looking at maybe making a funny, like, TikTok bit of, like, me just showing up and just going to an airport, you know, there's always like those like to-go electronics stores. Yeah, yeah. Try to go that and just see what I can find day of a or show like, and just kind of have to go with the flow. The vending machines. Yeah, vending machine headphones. Yeah. Maybe the next one. Yeah. Um, you've played Veld before, right? You're playing there this weekend. Yeah, I, I feel like it was four years ago. Yeah, probably. I, I feel like I've just lost perspective of time with the pandemic. It was yeah. at least three, maybe four, maybe yeah. five. But, uh, yeah, I played it a couple times now. It's nice. I think one of my first times I went there was would have been like right when I was starting out, like seven years ago. Played, right. Like, opened up the side stage on the Saturday. So you're slowly moving up the bill. Slowly moving up. It's definitely gonna be a fun set. Yeah. Excited to get back. Do you uh, do you ever drop any like Canadian specific classics or like do you um, have, would you play a different set than what you play in Vegas? Yeah, for sure. So I have like a bunch of songs that have done really well here on radio that I need to put in, or I'd probably get a lot of backlash from bands of mine if I didn't put them in. So Do you have management that are like, you need to play this. Uh, play this more. Why are you not playing this? Mm, like, sometimes. My manager yeah. sometimes will come up during my set and come up with a crazy idea. He's like, try this. I'm like, that's a horrible idea, but I'll do it anyways. <laughs> yeah. um, no, we kind of like work together. Me and my tour manager, my management. Um, I don't know. It was kind of like every time I play a show, I kind of get the vibe where like what's working, what's not. Every city kind of has their own little quirks of what they like and what they don't like. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's good, to, it's good to keep it fresh. I try not to play the same set. Really? Too often. Like, I'll keep, like, parts, like, kind of, like, my, my building blocks the same, but yeah. I have to mix it up and always be testing out new songs and... Yeah. Never really know. Um, what's the, uh, the wildest story from a gig that you're allowed to tell us? Ooh, it's a good one. Because um, I'm sure there's some that you aren't... I'm trying to think. Kind of, like, the first thing that jumped to my mind is, like, playing like funny songs I was in Miami once again three or four years ago I don't know um, middle like it was probably one, like 2.30 mid set 2.30 in the morning and the, the girl who manages all the tables comes up and said this table has spent $100,000 on like bottles and stuff they really want to hear Sweet Caroline I'm like I don't have Sweet Caroline it's like don't worry we have it on USB key no and I'm like this is going to go horribly but I realized everyone loves Sweet Caroline it actually made it to my sets afterwards there's videos of like 
me after a couple of drinks on the mic, like literally singing like the ba ba ba, like at the audience, like no one, no music down, but everyone loved it. That's amazing. Did um, they have pyro for that as well when they dropped? No, nah, not indoors, unfortunately. Oh. There might have been, been CO2. Yeah. I don't think the, the CO2 guy was like, we need to do this for Sweet Carolina. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was one of those moments where I'm like, this is going to go horribly, and then it went really well. And then Matt, I'm not going to lie and say I didn't play Sweet Caroline in my sets after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not it's, like it's, a remix or an edit, just straight up. It's a mainstay like now. Original, original Neil Diamond. Keep people video. guessing. That's what yeah. you got to do. It's what it's all about. Yeah. Um, who are some of your favorite live performers that you like to, to go and see live when you get the chance? Um, from like a DJ perspective, like obviously I see Kygo a lot and yeah. I've, I've learned a lot from him and yeah. he's always fun to watch and it's always good to experience other people. Uh, from like a non-DJ side, Coldplay has always been one of my favorite bands. Yeah. I don't know how I got so into them. I've seen them live five times. And yeah. Like Chris Martins is such an incredible performer. Uh, always put on really good shows. Mm -hmm. So those are good ones. But I also like going to see like random artists, like when you're in LA or Nashville or something, there's so many good unknown artists and I feel like you just, it's good to go experience new things that you're not kind of have no expectations and could be pleasantly surprised. A hundred percent. What do you think of the Canadian DJ scene or, pro or producer scene. It's right? good. I feel like there's a lot of us coming out of here. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I feel like off the top of my head, it's hard to like name them all. But I feel like every time I come back to Toronto, there's always like some other people I didn't realize are from Toronto that ended up like coming out to a show or running them at a bar or running them at a music studio. And so yeah. I didn't realize like another Canadian's breaking onto the scene. Yeah. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm just. That's I'm, all good. I'm really just trying to capture the detail here. It's an interesting interview. I'm like trying to like be engaging but also not mess up my colors no no you are being very engaging um have you got any travel tips because you're always on the road like any any kind of like go to that's a good one um we always try to like go and experience a little bit of whatever city we're in if it's a, a fun city obviously yeah. if in somewhere in the middle of nowhere there's nothing to do we'll just kind of catch up on sleep but we we're just in europe for a bit and we tried to make like a point of like every day going on like walking around and trying interesting new restaurants or going to see sites and I feel like when people tour, I think I caught up in kind of like just case show after show after show. So we're and just to, sleep in all day. To, not to miss out on those experiences and yeah. look back at the end of the year and be like, we did nothing nothing special. Yeah. So that's like an important one. Um, other than that, like I just, I have a really good eye mask when I fly. I like being on the plane. It's like, I feel like no one can bother me. My manager can't bother me. It's like phone goes on airplane mode, eye mask goes on, AirPods go in. And oh, I, so you're a light sleeper then? Yeah. Yeah. So it's nice because I know like, I can't be bothered when I'm on there. So Yeah, I feel like DJing is not the job for you if you can't get like quick naps and quick yeah. sleep. Like You need to just get all you can get, no, right? De definitely. <laughs> um, any wild backstage stories that you've had at festivals or anything? You've done a few festivals now, right? Nothing too crazy. I feel like people always like over-glamorize like, what's going on backstage. It's usually just a bunch of roadies getting ready to like for the next performance, read rooms that like, people pop in and... I feel like you pick up green room tips on the way of like when you're traveling a lot or touring a lot. It's like you see people, it's like Don Diablo where there's like, yeah, we always ask for a bag of nuts that's been unopened and fruit that's uncut and washed. <laughs> so it's like when you're on the road and popping to the next spot, it's like, hey, we can like take these foods to go and not like have it go bad. And I don't know, little tips like that. I feel yeah. like not a ton of crazy, crazy stuff happens yeah. backstage, which is yeah. a boring answer, but. Well, it's right. Like I yeah. think everyone has this idea of what backstage is. It's not actually, it's not actually true. Yeah, I feel like once you like when you're back there too, everyone's just so on the go for all these festivals that they, it's yeah, kinda strictly like they get back there, get down to business, and then take off and they're onto the next one. Especially the more and more you're touring. Right, I'm ready to uh, to give you the big reveal. Let's see it. If you're ready, I'm ready. I'm prepared. Okay, so this is you on the road. <laughs> it's got the headphones on there. That's pretty good. It's you in the Vegas sun with a few tall buildings i like that um yeah that's, you can keep it if you want i, I got the chains i can't take the other side of your, your beatles page though can i um i think we can make an exception oh it is actually it's actually been done by someone else you can have that as well if you want I can't take that. <laughs> maybe we should leave it in there as a reminder we'll leave it in there yeah. as a memento yeah. i'll get you to sign it i will actually, sign it for sure if that's if that's all right because that's going to be worth a lot of money one day i think yeah. and whoever signatures on the other side like double down. Do you still believe me after I said I went to uh, London School of Art for five years? I don't believe you. <laughs> um, well, I'm gonna end on that. Are you gonna think I drew it now because my signature's on it? Or? That, yeah, that's that exactly what what's gonna that? happen. Yeah, you'll see it on eBay in about five hours. 
Um, Self-portrait. Can Michael. we have a look at yours? I know you didn't draw me, but you uh, you colored in Elton John. Yeah, part of him. He's not wearing colored shoes or his piano yet. But. I think he looks good. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, got the hair, I think. Yeah, I mean the sunglasses could have been a little bit more blingy. Blingy, yeah. but yeah, you got the rocket in there. Yeah, very yeah. good. No, I'm impressed. That's very good. I took too mo too long on the hair. I think I like kind of triple colored the hair. I think he'll appreciate that. Though, it's good hair. It's yeah, just like he spends a lot of time on it yeah. if it's his. Yeah. <laughs> well, Frank Walker, thanks so much, Thank for, much uh, for hanging out. It. This has been iHeartRadio <laughs> Canada's artist coloring artist and also a caricature. <laughs> um, listen up for uh, Frank Walker's uh, latest song, Madness, out now. <laughs>